Priti. Hi, Arvind. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I think uh, this is my third event in uh, where I'm giving a seminar in Devopedia. It feels very great for me as well uh, for, to be contributing to the organization which helped me grow initially. Uh, if people don't know, like I started learning Python when I st went through a couple of workshops where Arvind took over in Bangalore. So I'm always grateful to Devopedia and Arvind for giving that basic introduction to me. Uh, having said that, uh, let us start with today's uh, topic, Apache Kafka. Uh, before we start, uh, let's know why we need it. Why is Kafka needed? You can see in today's world, the people have already been shifted from a static life to they need everything on real time. They did. Earlier, people used to talk on phone once in a while, but now they need social media for every single update every now and then. Even the newspapers which were supposed to come in the mornings or in the evenings has been shifted to live news whole day, you can say. Even the trend of going to shops for buying things has been shifted for online shopping. Now you can expect anything and everything being delivered on online. So the generation or today's world wants everything digital. But now how much delay can these people expect? So delay is something nobody wants to have. So in order to manage that, there came a need of a new software or new technology which the traditional databases could not handle or traditional databases are not well reliable. For which they came in the need of real time streaming systems. Uh, so the no, knowing that why uh, the real time streaming systems came into picture. Now let's know who started it. Kafka was initially started by LinkedIn because of the high number of data they used to get or for messages, loggings, for everything. Uh, it was not able, they were not able to handle the data because for which they started developing a new tool or a new software which was uh, designed for facilitating activity tracking of the users and collection of application metrics and logs. Now they are being relayed by Kafka even still in LinkedIn and they are made divided into five sections like queuing, matrices, logs, database replication and data tracking. It was quite uh, initially started around 2011, so it's been quite some time where Kafka has been in the industry, but it's being up upgraded every now and then. So now how it works. Uh, you know we have data come from which comes from front end, which comes from Hadoop clusters. It can come from anywhere. One application is always connected to uh, my basically all the systems are now most of the systems are onto micro um, uh, micro systems. So we have many systems where the data gets connected. You have front end, you have Hadoop, you have chat going on and these data has to be passed on to database server security system database to store the data and when you when there you upload some file or something it has to be validated for which you need security systems and the data has to be monitored real time all these to happen in one go it is quite difficult for which kafka started with that uh, going to the next slide uh, uh, let's see which all companies use Kafka. You can see uh, there are quite a few number of companies that use Kafka in their systems. You know, so Slack uses Salesforce uses Netflix, Coursera. Almost every company uh, we have a uh, we have a statistics in the upcoming slides saying how much companies uh, use. Kafka as well. A few of the use cases before we move in further. So AWS managed Kafka, which is again a version of Kafka is used by a lot of companies 
here are a couple of examples delivery a logistics and supply chain company uses a uh, kafka for maintaining the uptime and reduces the resources and maintaining an uh, suitable architecture uh, nutmeg a financial services company uses kafka for monitoring its operational data which also configures and monitors the cluster health as well postmark which is a uh, platform to buy and sell used clothes and cloth accessories uses kafka for real time machine learning to probably understand how uh, where the need of the cloth comes like a lot of models built all that are being used by uh, postmark as well here are another another set of applications where kafka can be used uh, you can say real time streaming where uh, the, it is used for a credit card fraud detection uh, suppose you make a transaction and you are not sure the the company or the credit card provider is not sure that you have made a transaction so immediately if there is some different or some uh, uneven kind of transaction happening uh, immediately it thinks it's a uh, fraud and probably the credit card company makes you a call or they block your card until further actions taken so it minimizes the risk and improves the customer satisfaction we have online gaming uh, even though they use real uh, unity engines for gaming it also uses kafka for real time data to ma manage how multiple uh, game players are playing and it, it uh, gaming is obviously a huge data so uh, the data has to be processed and for which they use kafka there are other options but probably this is one of the most reliable option yes you know kafka is an open source distributed event streaming platform uh, which is used by thousands of companies for high performance data pipelines streaming analytics integration and mission critical applications as said more than 80% of the fortune 100 companies trust and use kafka and almost most of the manufacturing top manufacturing companies banks insurance and telecom all use kafka for uh, in one or the other use case so these are the use cases like data pipeline streaming analytics integration mission critical applications are some of the use cases where kafka is used in on the technical part now how it works so here are the pr producers you can say producers are someone who will re, um, uh, know more about the architecture in the next slide uh, this is a basic like there are some, there are few producers which basically produce the data and it is fed into a kafka cluster which is again read by consumer we will see how uh, each of it works but this is how like there are n number of producers which push into one kafka cluster which is read by n number of consumers and consumer groups yeah this uh, probably explains kafka uh, on a best scale so we have a cluster cluster is one kafka machine you can say uh, you deploy a kafka cluster so Ka kafka cluster is the one that handles everything and the first the most important requirement for a kafka cluster is a broker broker is a kafka server which runs your kafka and a cluster can a cluster will generally have more than one broker so the need of more brokers is for fault tolerance and uh, also performance uh, multiple brokers work in a kafka cluster and achieve load balancing reliable uh, redundancy and fail failover so we need someone when there are more than one brokers 
we need someone who manages it so it is managed by apache zookeeper and zookeeper uh, manages and coordinates the kafka cluster it notifies the nodes the uh, where kafka cluster changes including when uh, brokers are added topics are added or removed uh, broke i mean in this example in this diagram uh, zookeeper i have not shown but it will be all the brokers are always connected to one zookeeper the next one we, uh, we will see is a producer so producer uh, it serves as a data source as said it generates the data or the data source for the whole kafka cluster is from producer apart from just producing the data or sending the message to a topic it also does the tasks of serializing compressing and load balancing the data among the brokers by partitioning we will see uh, all uh, other details as well now the next one once we have a producer we obviously need someone who consume it so consumers are the ones who read the data by uh, reading the messages from a topic which they are subscribed to and one consumer can belong to a consumer group and consumer group will have responsibility of reading the data now we have come across topic at least a couple of times but now we will know what it is let's take an example uh, you send a whatsapp message to someone you want to make sure it is sent to the same person whom you think so that is like uh, so you can consider a phone number as a topic in when you send it when you consider whatsapp that is a topic is the one that defines the channel suppose you uh, taking an example of a production system you are sending some logs you are sending some user data so there are two topics basically producer sends data to a specific topic so the data generated by user would be sent to a user a user topic and the background probably user clicks where which is used for analytics is probably handled in a analytics or some other topic or if a user uses cart something like that so basically there are n number of topics in a kafka cluster and all the topics are always unique and there is no limit for the number of topics that when we that can be created in a kafka now let us see what a partition is partition every topic is divided into n number of partitions for a reason they are uh, replicated they are divided and they are replicated among uh, across all the brokers so let's say there are broker a and broker b and topic is user so bro both broker a and broker b will have topic user and there are multiple consumers and each consumer can read from the broker parallelly there is no like one consumer is reading the data and other consumer has to wait we don't have something like that each consumer can read the data whenever they want there is no conditioning for that and there is you have many n number of configurations that can be made like we can set a key for a producer message and all the keys of one producer message uh, goes into one common um, one common partition and and it can be used for sequencing as well and message without keys are handled through round robin robin fashion uh, there are a lot of uh, configurations that can be made against partitions and replicas replication factor is one topic which is uh how many replicas of data you want which is very much necessary for the high level high availability of kafka deployments when one broker goes down we need another broker to take up its role and other replicas will remain available so one when one broker goes down another broker stays alive and manages their data thus ensuring the data is not lost
and also uh, replication factor defines how many copies of the topic are maintained and how many example and how many uh, partitions are made example when there is two replicas made and there will be two copies of the topic for every partition and uh, every broker uh, elects one uh, every cluster elects one broker as a leader which generally keeps uh, using the data for transmission when the leader grow, goes down broker automatically elects a new broker a new uh, new partition as a uh, leader and thus even the whole data is never lost basically kafka was built for high availability of data and speed and uh, logically speaking the replication factor cannot be greater than number of brokers now uh, let's have a small hands on session on the whole so i have set up uh, a i have set up my machine uh, for uh, this uh, kafka and i've used couple of tutorials and the whole uh, code has already been push uh, in the git in the github you can use it uh, we will go through each of it so i'll 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 stop all the servers that i have and i'll start from first so that uh, everyone has a idea of what all we are going to do uh is the screen like should i still enlarge it uh, the vs code yeah this should be fine okay uh yeah so first i am uh, i have set up uh, a couple of examples as well uh, so i have my kafka server here uh, i have uh, downloaded it and i have set up my kafka server and also i have a spark server which is up and running uh, so th with this first thing let's see what all kafka server has uh, if i go here i have been where all my, all my code would be existing like the whole kafka code would be existing and these are the files that i would be generally running and we have configurations uh, so we have server properties let us see this the important one so we have a broker so as said there would be an id for broker and it will always be unique for every broker and i am listening through this port uh, i have where my uh, i have my log where kafka log is stored uh, i can set the number of partitions i want per topic and you have one uh, other set of options like recovery thread and lot of other options but these are the main things that we are going to see in today's example first one would be the broker id and second one is the listener this is the listener where my kafka broker would be running and uh, the third option is log directory now uh, let us make two servers so that we will uh, two brokers i will be running two brokers i will open server one which i have already set up so you can see the id of this broker is 1 and i again is 0 of this and i am listening on 9093 port here and the other one is kafka log so i have to change these are the three mandatory configurations when you want to have multiple replication factors to be set up so so i have done that uh now let us start so i'll first start my zookeeper zookeeper is the one that maintains the cluster that is that looks after the brokers so first one first thing to do is i am in kafka server folder where uh, my kafka is downloaded and i'll be starting 
Kafka server, we have Zookeeper properties. So that would be here Zookeeper dot properties. We have uh, Zookeeper port and maximum number of connections. This is the port that Zookeeper keeps running. Uh, this is one. We generally don't change it, but if you want, probably you can. Uh, but for now, let's not do that. So now I'm running my Zookeeper server. For this, you need Java. Uh, Kafka basically runs on Java, so you need Java installed and Java setup. And now my Kafka, my Zookeeper is running. The next one to do is I'm starting my Kafka server with config as server dot properties. And the next one is. I'll start the next one server one dot properties. Yes, we have all of that now. We will come to this later. We will start this. We'll start with this. So we have a broker uh, which says my broker list. I can pass multiple lists, but for now I've just set one. And I have to first before doing this. I have to create a topic. So we will see creating topic. So I have started now. Uh, I have already created so if I'll first delete the topic. And now first thing is to create a topic. Creating a topic is here. So I'm specifying the replication factor and number of partitions I want. Yes, the topic is created. The next thing to do is we will see what the topic come. Uh, we'll first see what all topics are there. So you can see here I am specifying the zookeeper port here. Yes, I have a couple of them, but these are the two topics that we have. This is something which Confluent uses, which we are not using it now. In this example today. Confluent is a service provider for Kafka which actively involves in uh, upgrading Kafka versions and which uh, which is like main contributor for Kafka and Confluent was started by people who who initially developed link uh, Kafka in LinkedIn. So now uh, let's describe what this topic does what this topic contains. So we have Kafka Spark as our topic and we have partition. We have two partitions and we have one leader replica. We have all of this and other set of information. We have uh, information here as well. Now let us. Create now we have created the producer. Now I'll start. Uh, uh, running the producer. Yes, this is my product. Yes, now I have this up uh, uh, with the producer. I need a consumer as well. I will run my consumer. So you can specify how you want. I will. I will have two tabs here. So. I will say I need my topic to be running from the beginning. So the moment I generate a message, it is automatically stored here. We have all you can do all this. So this is basically how uh, you set up your Kafka and run. Uh, 
run as a producer and consumer uh now also we want to if you want to delete a topic we have command like delete topic and you specify the name so this is this couple of things that i had uh, any questions till now hi sir hello yeah um just uh, we need to elaborate what is consumer what is producer what is uh, um topics okay uh, you mean on the architecture part yeah architecture part what exactly yeah. yes so this is good you, but uh, how the flow will be begin like step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 like that it can be understandable more yes so uh, uh, as we saw in the hands on till now Uh, first i have set up my kafka cluster that is i have installed my server and all and then i started my zookeeper uh, i have set up in when i set up my cluster i said how many servers i want how many brokers i want uh, which is uh, server configurations which i made and then i had a broker which is uh, i had the brokers and i had zookeeper set up to run the brokers to handle and manage the brokers and then i created a topic called kafka uh you can see here uh, first i created a topic called uh, kafka spark which is the same flow how uh, in any case it works so first you create you first set up your zookeeper uh, which is needed for a kafka to run and then you set up uh, your clusters and you set up the number of brokers that you want you create a topic you, the topic should always be unique in the cluster and once you have that you have a producer i'll show you i also have, have a small example how you can actually code uh, using python for producer and consumer as well i'll show that too uh, now when the producer uh, see you can see here uh, when in the code uh, i have when i started creating a producer i specified for which topic i want the car producer to generate the message so this we have and then so this means this producer is listening to only this topic now i can probably create one more topic and say uh, i need it for multi uh, different uh, i want another broker to listen yes so we will leave this aside we will open a new tab and i will say i want to change the topic here i will say yes so now i have a topic created already so now let us uh, uh we have devopd as the topic now let us generate one more producer topic is yes now i will start listening i am just copy pasting it uh, rather than typing it it's quite long command yes i have not see i'll show you example i have not said i want all the data from beginning so i will add here yes i have created a message it is not delivered yes this message is already delivered yes so yeah this is how the whole flow works 
so the producer uh, first subscribes to a topic consumer subscribes to a topic i have not gone through the details like generating consumer groups and all uh, i have just done this much uh, and uh, you can do it but it will quite take some time but uh, because we wanted a basic example so i've just started with producer topic and consumer and yeah this this was is this the one that you were asking how it works uh as a real time example can we say like that uh, is it behave like whatsapp when we send a message it's delivered to other person yes that is what we were wanted to say it is a real time streaming system i'll show you an example of a real time streaming system as well which i have done uh maybe we'll take up uh, after um, some time like we we will do it like i have connected to a spark engine where i have done some analytics and then the analytics produces the result which is already handled so we will show go through that as well i'll close these session sessions for now yes i have uh, first thing to do is yes so i'll first before i go into this if there are any other questions we'll take up and then we'll come to this demo i thought of giving a real world example to help people who are beginners to this mm -hmm. so yes. uh, an example from iot would be like this let's assume that there is a smart building with uh, let's say three or four floors and each floor has lots of sensors uh, some sensors are temperature sensors pressure sensors humidity sensors or motion sensors so now all this uh, so each sensor is considered as a producer in kafka language each one is a producer and then uh, there is a facility manager who is supposed to manage the smart building whenever there is a new data coming in from the sensors he will get an alert in his app so the app uh, which is installed on the phones of facility managers those apps are the consumers so whenever there is a new sensor reading from the producer the consumer which is the app will uh, be notified that there is a new reading and the app will consume that data and display it to the manager so that is a real world example of uh, you know a producer and the consumer and what about topic uh, so uh, let's assume that uh, you know every floor first floor second floor third floor each one is a topic by itself which means that all the sensors which are on first floor will post their latest uh, readings to first floor topic similarly second floor topic and third floor topic so why topics have been defined in this manner because we assume in this application that each floor has a separate facilities manager so that guy will be looking only at uh, sensors pertaining to his floor so this is one way in which you know you can use kafka to configure uh, configure kafka for your particular application but you can also define topics in a different way altogether for example you can put all temperature sensors under one topic all pressure sensors and are another topic all humidity sensors and another topic so the way you define these topics would be very much uh, contextual uh, depending on what your application requires and how your consumers are consume going to consume that data so that so i thought of sharing that real world example in case the terms of producer and consumer is abstract for you it's easier if you can relate it to a real world example yeah thank you yeah so now uh, we will see how the producer is done so this is a basic uh, it's a, very, a real basic example that i have written uh, where i am just reading some data from a file uh, which is uh, some random post file so i have some random data which is generated and my task here i am producing the data in a kafka producer and i am just returning it 
so the same to- uh, the topic name is kafka spark and i'm just returning it and uh, sh- i am i have to stream the data so how i stream the data is i have to specify the schema here and uh, this i am using this because i'm using spark as an example for how real time streaming is done so i have uh, some i have created some spark data frames and all and i have some example i can say uh, so you can see stream is where you read the data you have kafka topic where i am set my kafka topic name where I, the stream is basically subscribed here so you can see the kafka kafka topic name is kafka spark so i am basically listening to the data which producer generates so this is an example which i have uh, so first i will run my kafka producer.py so it is generating some data i am printing it now if i go to listener uh, yeah this is how you run a spark file uh, where i have to specify the artifacts and file name and all it takes time yes so we have here i have some file where i say uh, created by count i have so i have this is because it's already streamed data so it is done pushing it uh, once it is done it will slow down yeah now it has slowed down so i can say how many posts are active and which all posts are in which state i have uh, some basic analytics like just select star and i have done it so this is how a real time Uh, spa you can say example works so a uh, file is generating some data and which is being handled here and uh, it streams it does some analytics and it pushes to the user which can probably used for alerting mechanism as arvin said if something goes wrong or they say uh, if my value goes more than threshold of x with uh, i want uh, the recordings uh, email to be sent alert sent to be user something like that in that case uh, so we have an example like that so the producer is here i said which generates the messages and we have a streaming platform where streaming is done and some analytics are returned you can say this is this is one of the real time use case as well any other questions uh, hello sagar yeah hi hello yeah hi, uh, hi this is anu and how uh, uh, see now when you shown that uh, one message from the producer consumer we are able to see so in a remote scenario in a real time scenario how the consumer knows how the reliability part means uh, producer send that how can we make sure that that message is received here is there any communication happen any acknowledgement kind of things is happening uh, in between uh, there uh, you can set up an acknowledgement which is quite how, difficult uh, like uh, you have to set up with the configurations uh, acknowledge on received you, we have configurations now, Mm-hmm. now this is just we are passing we are receiving this the word we can say right it's received but we don't have any any agreement kind of yeah this is received yeah next message you can pass otherwise if in between something consumer missed also the consumer part is not aware it's whatever it's in between some disconnection happen uh, multiple messages are coming no in between something disconnects and a second message passed and third message only received so yes, the, how yes how, yeah. yeah we have as i said you can set a key for a producer message so mm-hmm. when you create a producer you can set up a key and you can add to a key and using that key you can also set up a sequence and messages with as i said uh, the keys will be able to handle the sequencing of the messages but that is that is in 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 broker in broker side no how the consumer part will configure that so keep no, on anyways you, it's in 
no yeah. no you have to Can configure it, that you have to configure that in a producer producer okay. uh, on a kafka okay. partition see basically producer okay. sends messages to a broker which is mm-hmm. re, uh, which is sent to a partition so okay at, at that point you set up all these keys and value mm-hmm. keys and ids where uh that would be handled also at the consumer so when a party because consumer and producer are together linked with a broker uh, in a mm-hmm. topic it, okay. topic is topic is the main link but topic is basically stored in a broker so okay. what happens is uh when you set up such kind of sequence you, you can handle it mm. yeah a uh, bin if in uh, in see the configuration that just sorry for the confusion i am making like because uh, uh, how uh, means uh, see any any this the see the last message i received this then you can pass the second one is there any kind of that's what my thing is like so kafka send producer send a message and in between our machine got down uh, so, uh, or so down and something but kafka keep on sending then um, how the consumer this message only last i receive or kind of uh, yeah yeah that part is quite difficult in kafka the reason behind it is it's quite too fast to do such kind of manipulations it is possible i'm not sure but it is possible as, but a bit difficult as i i read somewhere that uh it is possible but quite difficult because it is quite fast mm yeah it is so yeah hello this is arvin uh, i have not actively worked on kafka but from what i have read uh, the consumer or the zoo keeper maintains an offset okay so, uh, let's say there are 10 messages and uh, as uh, the gentleman said after reading three messages the consumer went down okay so, in between you know seven more messages have come from the producer mm-hmm. when the consumer comes up again it knows the offset that it has read the first three messages so it will read the remaining seven okay yeah okay. so see the fundamental thing uh, which uh, must be understood of, about kafka is it mm-hmm. is not like a client server system like tcp ip okay okay so in tcp ip it is end to end and uh, it is synchronous that is both parties have to be alive and communicating but kafka architecture mm-hmm. is more like the publish subscribe architecture so first of all it is asynchronous and secondly the producer and the consumer are uh, separated that is to say they are decoupled as uh, shruti mentioned their main connection is through the topic they don't talk to each other directly so the fundamental points are that they are decoupled and the communication is asynchronous which means that by design okay. if the consumer goes down it has read only three messages and after a while it comes up it knows that it has read only three messages but in the kafka topic there are 10 messages so it knows that there are seven new messages which it has to read okay so the okay. message is not the last okay sir so what is the retention period for this how we can configure this come again i didn't catch that question it means see uh, three message passed and uh, in between got disconnected yeah i've sent offset set and after three days or something we are coming back we are coming back to the system so this uh, time is okay 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 i saw that the uh, configuration something is there to uh, to keep it in the uh, producer or so keep or something like that hello yeah you can set up like uh, how much time uh, if i'm not wrong because you are not very clear uh, based on you what i heard that if the client goes down for 3 days and comes up after 3 days what would happen mm-hmm. so yeah you can set up uh, how what is the time ttl that is how much time the data can exist okay so that we need to do it in the soup keeper right yes not in the zoo keeper kafka broker properties you have to do that okay so arvin sir told it's a asynchronous manner it is going so uh, so for that some partition you mentioned right so so partition you mentioned so how this uh, this uh, means it will 
broadcast the message to all the consumer or uh, consumer only or how that the message passing because it will be difficult to so see the are... microphone is not clear there's a lot of noise okay sorry so uh, So anyway, uh, uh, wow, Shruti already replied to your earlier question. Uh, so basically, okay, the default okay, okay. retention is seven days, mm -hmm. but it can be configured. I think, yeah, it can be configured. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I think you are. We are lost with your voice. Shruti, what is next? Uh, I think I have only this much for today. I so have a generic question. More questions. Uh, what are uh -huh. the alternatives for? Yeah, one alter, one alternative. Yeah, what are the alternatives for? Yes, one alternative you can use RabbitMQ, but Okay. Uh, it's i uh, have done a bit of analysis on that uh, it is not that fast and it is also not that memory efficient when it comes to huge amount of data like i have passed around 15 gb of data in one go and it is not that efficient uh, kafka uses couple of uh, procedures or couple of uh, you can say algorithms where you can uh sing uh, serialize your data and which helps your data to be very faster so there is something called protobuf serializer which is which uses gr which is similar to what grpc uses it is quite fast it there is also one more called avro which i have done here uh which i was doing avro examples so this is also quite fast where you specify the architecture that you want this is the architecture of my uh, you can say you can type casting it basically my file would be of this format so based on that only uh, the data would come with this kind of handling uh, kafka is quite a bit faster when compared to others what about read streaming is that different from uh no redis streaming is also an option but again uh, because it all uses a similar technology what rabbit mq uses uh mm -hmm. for data transmission uh basically uh, rabbit mq and redis are ones that you are quite similar uh the i have not done an analysis on that but uh, definitely i can say kafka is i'll uh give me a minute i'll show you the result which i have done as well so meanwhile just to add my thoughts on this uh, see rabbit thank you is based on the mqtt standard so it is very different from kafka because kafka is not based on mqtt as far as i know and uh, rabbit mq uh, yeah probably it's not using protobuf uh, as an implementation but there could be other uh, providers of MQ mqtt implementations which could be using protobuf because uh, rabbit uh, mqtt is a standard and the implementations could be different of that standard so hey, some MQTT. implementations could be more efficient the mqtt is about iot right yeah about iot but uh, it's a specific use case no Apache Kafka also can be used to serve IoT applications. Okay, I know Rabbit. So I you mentioned this only because uh, Shruti said Rabbit MQ because Rabbit MQ is primarily an MQTT implementation. It is actually JMS implementation, I think. Huh? JMS implementation. Uh, Java messaging survey. So they have some standard. Ah. Uh, so. Yeah, the, the uh, RabbitMQ complies to JMS standard. 
I'm not sure about MQTT or not. Uh, that's the one. Okay, so yeah, I'm also not sure. As I said, Rabbit MQ, you can see uh, I have a couple of serializers. So I have JSON serializer, protobuf, avro. So protobuf being the best one because it compresses data quite way better than any others. So this is like the number of documents I pass. So when I use Kafka, uh, I can probably hit around 12 uh, using protobuf. I, I was able to hit around 12,000 and odd with single cluster. I had no broker setup, uh, which is when you set up brokers only Kafka would act the best. But without all that, I could achieve this much of uh, capacity on my Kafka. So even this, I think I have on GitHub. You can probably go through that as well. Okay. Uh, how does the serialization come in this messaging protocol? Uh, basically, define my own message in any format I want, right? Yes, you can define. You can define, but there are a couple of predefined ones. Uh, this version, what I have done is based on Confluent Kafka. So Confluent Kafka has a couple of serialization techniques which are inbuilt. You can define your own serialization technique as well, or you can just pass as a string. But uh, because I wanted to achieve uh, a better result, I went through using uh, what I felt would be the best one and which was already predefined ones. So while using that, I was able to achieve this. Okay, uh, which means, you know, yeah, can we implement the same serialization with the JMS, the RabbitMQ also? Uh, I'm not really Maybe sure. May not be out of the box, but. Okay. Also in your experience, uh, which cloud version of Kafka is best among Azure, GCP and AWS? Uh, I have used only like I've done all my development or like I've not gone through any production based systems. I've not done for a production machine yet. All I've done is only local development for a couple of my projects like my master's project and others. Uh, so I'm I'm not used on a large scale. I'm not aware of that. So uh, yeah, so uh, th hi, this is Naveen. So uh, Kafka mm, has a community version, which I think Shruti is uh, probably using on uh, his local box and working with yes. it. Uh, like there is a um, organization called Confluent, which um, has a like a commercial version of Kafka. So they provide a cloud based um, like platform for doing it at a uh, like an enterprise scale. Uh, and I think they have uh, options to use multi cloud. Um, like I, I'm sure they have a presence on um, with many of the providers, be it Azure, AWS, or GCP. Okay, you recommend using their, their uh, enterprise version in any cloud? Yes, yes. So they have been uh, supporting the Kafka um, uh, platform from a very, very long time. So Confluent has a, uh, like a cloud based uh, commercial version available. They have been backing Kafka from a long time. Uh, um, Sruti, I have one more question. Can I? Yes, yes. Yeah, Anup here. So uh, how uh, this um, 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 sir one uh, sir told about uh, some asynchronous, right? So uh, when the asynchronous comes into picture, how see for one uh, messages are continuously are uh, going. OK, so from producer, so multiple consumer, you mentioned multiple consumer somewhere, I think so. So yes, if that is the case, how the correlation works in the consumer because it's different system, no? So consumer, how this correlation means? Yeah, it's a or how um, that correlation means? Uh, yeah, this consumer one 
received this message and the consumer to receive the other message so if it is continuous one how that will manage that uh, correlation between the um, consumers that is the job of the zookeeper zookeeper handles all of that okay okay so zookeeper is the one that handles all of these things Okay. Now, actually, so, there is something called publish, uh, uh, yeah, publish and sub uh, subscriber. Yes. So yeah, mm -hmm. it can actually, you know, anybody can subscribe and then they will get it. Yeah. So as long but, as you, uh, know, you are a subscriber, you know, you you will be um, made sure by Kafka that you get it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This question was configuration. Configuration we can do it in Soupkeeper. Some properties you mentioned. Yes. Right there. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. His question, I think, it was like. How do you uh, manage like consumer one has received and it goes down? He was taking probably taking that example, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's like that can the correlation how zookeeper you mentioned. Yeah, right? so, uh, yeah, yes, yes, that is done by zookeeper. So how the scaling part means how any any restriction kind of things is how much this is the maximum limit of data or something terabyte petabyte of data or something like that is scaling reliability reliability anyways you mentioned that uh, it will keep for some time so scaling part how how that's Kafka. Uh, I'm not sure as I said I've not worked on a production based okay. system. But uh, I uh, I was able to pass at least around 15 GB of the data for okay, the example right. that you can see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shruti. Hi, Sagar. Thank you, Shruti. Yeah. Welcome. Hi, Sagar. Hi. Yep. Uh, many of the prerequisitions uh, to. Uh, learn this Kafka things. What exact what modules will be available in the Kafka? We are from other 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 domain. Just mm -hmm. want to know what prerequisition we need to have to ship for this technology, and what exactly modules like technical or functional administration wise, any other things also available in this tool. Uh, on a technical, I as I know, like uh, Kafka has been uh, has modules on almost all. Like you have, you can use it using Python. You can use it. It's basically based on Java, so you'll always have on Java as well. So I think uh, that is well possible. Uh, I think I probably did on a technical perspective. I can say uh, that is. Uh, available almost in all the major programming languages where you can use it. Basically, it gives an API. Every programming language it gives an API where you can use with their modules. Like I have Kafka Python here uh, in my requirements. Uh, it is probably the same in others as well. Any idea what okay. Amazon uses? Amazon, no. I think they have their own uh, system. Uh, they have something which is competitive, like they are building a competitive to this. I think they use that only. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they have their own pubs, uh, pub sub version. So uh, primarily for um, uh, like just to um, quickly talk about the previous question. Uh, so there are some reference implementations available for um, uh, for Kafka um, reference in terms of um, like what kind of uh, producer configuration we need to do. How do we uh, scale the uh, brokers or how do we manage the uh, topics and the partitions uh, so we can uh, uh, look at some of the reference implementations. Uh, I think uh, probably it is from the Confluent um, yes, website Confluent, documentation Confluent has it. themselves. So, uh, like I said um, earlier, also they've been uh, like doing a lot of work on uh, building a, a more manageable uh, version of Kafka. So uh, yeah, in terms of uh, uh, the configuration management, uh, like the reference implementations would be a really good starting point. Uh, 
to look at what kind of basic uh, configuration we need and uh, like what is the minimum um, from what i understand uh, kafka setup requires a decent uh, a good uh, configuration to start with it's not like uh, um, like it it needs like some maybe like 16 to 32 gigs of ram kind of a, a configuration i believe so um, yeah okay any final questions so just to conclude uh, those of you who are beginners, uh, I think many of you are beginners. You can take a look at the Apache Kafka article on Devopedia. Uh, yeah, at the start of the talk, Shruti, Shruti showed you that page. So you can go to that and read about it. Uh, yeah, this is the one. So uh, uh, start from, uh, the it describes the architecture. Why do we need Kafka? And then uh, you know, what are the key features of Kafka? What are the use cases? So these are some of the things which are described in this article. And uh, if those interested, you can look at also the milestone section, which talks about uh, how Kafka started and how it has progressed to today. Okay, is there any chance to receive this recorded session? Yes, this uh, is being recorded. So within an hour, it will be on our YouTube channel. So you oh. just go to Google and search uh, YouTube uh, Devopedia channel. So you will get the link. OK, thank you. Yeah, so you can follow this uh, with the, via the recording. So this is the channel. So we have come to the end of the talk. Thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, just a note for future speakers. Uh, I'm sure many of you are experts in your own domain. Uh, so we invite you uh, to give a talk in your area of expertise. So just contact us, uh, you know, contact me. Uh, my email address is, or you can just write to webadmin at devopedia.org. So then we can take it forward. Or you can send me a message on LinkedIn. Anything is fine. Yeah. So thanks for joining. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Arun. Thank you.